Hello, welcome to this meeting of the Transport Decision me Making Meeting at Portsmouth City Council. Um, welcome everybody. Um, we are competing with a sound check from um, people called lottery winners, um, which I don't know what people sound like who didn't win the lottery, but anyway. Um, so, welcome. Um, Let's start by going through introductions. I'm Gerald Vernon Jackson. I'm cabinet member for transport, and I'm chairing this meeting. Let's go around. Graham, um, Cats Graham Heaney. I'm the Labour Group spokesman on transport, and lots of other things. I discover. Yeah, acting deputy leader, covering four portfolios in total. But you know, that's, li that's life. You know, indeed. Um, okay, so where else? Shall we? Brian, you need to as the other. Um, the other spokesperson here. Councillor Brian Matrick for Portsgrove Independence, and I am also a group spokesperson. Thank you. And Simon Bosher, who's our Conservative spokesperson, isn't here in the sense his apologies. So, shall we go from... Should we do the back row first and then move forward? So, hello. Simon Bell, Principal Public Transport Officer. Hayley Chivers, Transport Planning Manager. Gareth James, Transport Strategy Team Leader. Hannah Simmons, Strategic Transport Lead. Bill Love, Safer Travel Manager. Okay, well, oh, there we go, thank you. Uh, Stanley Palmer, Senior Road Safety Officer. Denise Basto, Acting Parking Manager. Felicity Tipperary, Assistant Director for Transport. In brackets, the boss. Alison Harper, Democratic Services. And coming to talk to us. Councillor Susie Horton, um, Council for Central South Sea Ward in the, this context. Hello, I'm Ainsley Brooks. I'm um, the Central South Sea resident. I'm going to discuss for the active Pompey neighbourhoods. Lovely. Thank you. Okay, um, so this is this meeting is being filmed, so um, uh, the camera will track you if your mic is on, um, and so people will see what you say. Um, uh, we're not expecting a fire alarm, so if there is one, we meet at Queen Victoria. Is that right? No, we meet at Queen, Queen Henry Street down the way. Um, um, so, um, and don't take the lifts on the way down, and if you signed in, sign out. Um, is there anything else in terms of uh, various protocols we're meant to be doing? No, I think we're all okay. Okay, so we've had apologies from S Simon Bosher. Um, I'm not sure we've got any other apologies at all. Any declarations of interest members that we need to declare? No. Um, minutes of the last meeting. Do I need to? Are we? Are you? Do I just sign them? So, well, yes, I'd have thought it would have been on the minutes, but anyway, on, on the agenda, but such is life. Okay, um, active Pompey neighbourhoods. Um, Michelle, do you want to do the introduction and then we'll come to our colleagues here who want to speak on it? Thank you, Councillor Vernon Jackson. My colleague Hannah is the project manager, okay. so she's going to read the report and the recommendations. Well, I hope she's not going to read all of the report, as it's got uh, 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 105 pages. And we, have, we have had a conversation. Hannah is going to be extremely good and keep it to the overview. And then we will obviously turn to our colleagues, Councillor Horton and Ainsley, to give their deputations. Okay. Hannah. Thank you. So... Um, I'm here to present the proposal for the Active Pompey Neighbourhoods Project. Uh, the recommendations from the report are to issue scheme approval for traffic and waiting restrictions on Talbot Road and Bramble Road, as illustrated on the drawings, um, to implement the scheme in recommendation 2.1 under an experimental traffic management order made under the provisions of section 910.124, um, Schedule 1 and part five of the schedule nine of the road traffic regulation act 1984 um, and that the notices of making for the experimental traffic orders contain the statements specified in schedule five of the local authorities traffic orders procedure england and wales regulations 1996 um, that any valid 
Objections received during the statutory objection period are considered by way of written report to the Cabinet Member of Transport before a decision is reached on whether or not any of the provisions of the experimental order will be made permanent. That after consultation with Hampshire Constabulary, um, any modifications to any experimental order which renders it less restrictive may be authorised by the Cabinet Member for Transport without any requirement to re-advertise the order under Section 10 of said Act. To undertake a non-statutory consultation exercise with local stakeholders prior to any decision being made on moving to a permanent traffic order. To note that the APN spaces for greening will be initially filled with planters. It is the aspiration that should the experimental traffic order uh, be made permanent, these are turned into rain gardens. Um, to note the representations during the statutory speed hump consultation and approve officers' recommendations for the installation. So the Act of Pomping Neighbourhoods is a continuation of work we have done throughout the city in a concentrated area in central South Sea. Um, as indicated in the report. After extensive consultation, the proposals include traffic calming measures in the form of speed cushions, um, and under an experimental traffic regulation order, the introduction of planting, a bicycle hangar, um, one-way road on Bramble Road, and a contraflow um, cycling. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay, Susie. Well, you're net. You're, you're closest. Anything? Do you mind, Susie, going first? Thank you. Um, so I'm speaking as a ward councillor um, in favour of this item. I urge you, Chair, to um, go with the recommendations. I just want to highlight a few points. First of all is around the model of this consultation. Um, it's a very thorough model, which adds in a stage um, where you gather ideas initially before you draw up a scheme and I think that's a very worthwhile step um, so you're kind of you're you're working with residents good example here you're working with residents rather than doing it to them so the first at that stage of this um, process um, we had confirmation really of the issues that I had received and the other other councillors received in the area from cyclists but also walkers as well as drivers um, that we were aware of and it was really um, consoling to hear that, that actually that was a general feel amongst residents um, and so as a result of this a scheme was designed and I think what is really noteworthy is in order to prove that point is some of the original design scheme was amended on the basis of the feedback from residents so um, we've done a lot of work in engaging residents uh, had very good turnout at, at some events but also a lot of um, printed literature going out so as far as you can you can say that you have consulted very well and some of those things were tweaked and changed as a result of that um, I think the most important thing that I want to highlight is when you're trying to resolve a problem, it's sometimes it's easy to resolve a problem, but you have to think of the other problems that you might cause. So therefore, to resolve a problem, for example, down, traffic down Talbot Road would be to make sure that no one could access it, um, except for maybe residents or one way. But actually, we need to be sensible and look at the wider picture, and I think this scheme does reflect that. A um, couple more points. I think the experimental nature of this gives us a really good opportunity for residents to feedback. We're going to have to give it a period of time to change behaviour, but I think that's really important. Um, the opportunities to add greening in this ward in particular are really crucial. And some people might say, well, you're not really doing much, are you? But greening is so crucial for Central South Sea. There's hardly any um, green space. And, and I won't steal your thunder, but there are um, greening groups uh, emerging in the ward who are trying to adopt this one green step at a time thing. So I think this will complement work that's already started. So I'm very keen um, to emphasise the, the greening um, through that. Um, and finally, this is an additional thing to this scheme. I know it's separate, but I do want to mention it. Is I know the 20 mile an hour feedback which was something that came back from residents is not part of this scheme for obvious for understandable reasons but i do urge you chair to take on board that feedback from residents in those few 30 mile an hour roads that go through the heart of this scheme thank you 
Thank you very much. Ainsley. Yep. Hello. So I am also in favour of the um, scheme. Um, so why I'm in favour is because obviously it will reduce speed in cars, um, it will reduce standoffs between drivers, it will reduce the roads being used as a rat run, uh, reduce overall accidents. So in particular, I've witnessed accidents um, outside my home um, on the Fawcett Road and Talbot Road junction. Um, and also on the Jesse Road and Talbot Road Junction, I've witnessed four accidents there um, in the last 12 months, including recently when a car drove into the pub there. Um, make the area safer to drive, walk and cycle in. So again, I work at St Mary's Hospital and I cycle to work rather than drive. Um, but obviously there was a period that I actually reverted back to driving for a while because I was hit along Talbot Road. Um, whilst I was cycling. Um, it would also reduce pollution and improve mental health for residents that live in the area um, that have to deal with regular arguments and altercations between um, car drivers in particular. Um, and another thing I think is really good is the bend as well by the Golden Eagle pub um, because there we've witnessed quite a few cars speeding. And I know recently the Lawrence Arms pub um, was hit by a car. So it's just a matter of time until one of the, either the residential properties or the pub there is also hit. Um, and as also Susie mentioned with the green in, um, so not only is this improving residents that live in the area, um, there's schools nearby. So there's a high um, footfall with local schools. You've got Bramble School, Priory School, Fernhurst School, um, plus it's quite key routes to um, Fratton train station as well. So by reducing the number of cars, not really reducing, but trying to make it flow better um, would improve everyone's well-being within the area. Um, and also with this scheme, obviously it's Active Pompey, it's neighbourhood, we're trying to get communities together. So that's obviously with greening as well. So within Fawcett Road, we've got a greening group and recently Percy Road, they've created a greening group. So if planters were installed, um, residents um, would be able to get involved. And I know Bramble Score as well, they recently did some green in on the side of the co-op. So there'd be lots of opportunities for residents as well to get involved in this scheme. Thank you. Okay, thanks so much indeed. Okay, um, uh, this is a committee where the decision rests with me, but try to operate it to, to try to take involve, uh, in, into account views from uh, people from um, spokespeople from all the different groups. So um, I, I tend to ask people what their views are. So to see if we can get everybody on the same page, if possible. So Graham, do you do you want to go first? I have a couple of couple of questions first, of if course. I may. One very sort of minor question, but I'm impressed by the level of consultation. I think <clears throat> with a scheme like this, as Councillor Horton said, it's really important that we find out what people want before we start designing things. And I think that's been good about the scheme. And I know my colleagues, Councillor Gerard and Councillor Fielding, have, have welcomed that as, as well. But I just had one quick question about the consultation on sort of large figure page nine or page five, depending on which one you want to look at. Um, <clears throat> there's a list of engagement activities, and it talks about people who attended, and it says door knock, 536 doors knocked. Does that mean actual contacts, i.e. people spoke to you, or you just knocked the door and then nobody was in, so you went away? I know this from canvassing, so I know what it means. Uh, I was an engagement officer at the time of this consultation, so although I'm not currently in that role, I was one of the uh, officers involved with this. Um, if any doors knocked had failure to answer, they were still left with a letter giving an outline of the um, scope of the scheme as well as contact details for the project manager and relevant officers. So I would as, I would say that that number reflects total knocks as opposed to um, answered. I understand that and quite accept it's good that someone something was put through the door so people could respond if they weren't in so that's fantastic that's great. Um, I just wanted to ask a question about the greening start because um, <clears throat> I think it was mentioned by um, our resident so I, mean, I forgot your name it's just Ainsley, sorry, Ainsley. Ainsley mentioned <clears throat> there are sort of greening groups in parts of the city, and that's true of St Jude Ward as well. Now, if I understand it correctly, any of the greening elements of this, they will be done by the city council, not by residents. Is that is that correct? 
Um, we plan to get all of the residents who want to be involved involved in planting as well. So we are going to approach them when um, the decision's made, if it's approved, um, uh, start reaching out to those residents who would like to get involved and um, involve them from the planning stage to implementing and planting and being involved in the actual planting and ongoing kind of maintenance of it as well. So That's good, but I know from my own experience on my own ward, we've got two or three groups of residents who want to do greening, but actually it's been a really difficult process to get agreement about how to do it, and one of them has been going on for a year now, and we've just about had a consultation, so I wanted to be clear that we've actually got a process for agreeing this with residents. If the council's doing it, it's dead easy, because we just do it, you know, within the... But if residents are going to be involved, and they're going to have a either choose areas or maybe involve the resident, we, we need to make sure our process is right so that it's smooth, so I'm just hoping that that will be Okay, I mean, obviously, this is not going to start happening until you know later on. But I just want to be assured that there is a process and that it will be working. Also, for the, for other groups who want to do it on a voluntary basis in areas where we're not necessarily doing a traffic scheme. So I, I, I agree because I think there's there is evidence around the city of where people, as volunteers, have said they will do it, and then it doesn't happen, and we get dead plants left, uh, which nobody wants. So Hannah, what's so, is the council the fallback the fallback people, or how? Or Michelle, are you going to? Yeah, <laughs> not that Hannah hasn't done an amazing job because she has, um, but I think that um, it, we would follow the same process as we have done for the um, sort of a mini version of the process, as it were, as we've done for the actual scheme design, where the community code design is the key, um, but we do need to have sort of clear definitions of what we would need the residents to do. So we would present those to them and the level of commitment that that might take. Um, and if the residents are happy to take ownership of that, then we are very happy for them to take ownership of it. But as a council scheme and maintaining safety, we would still provide oversight. And obviously we in transport carry out a lot of partnership working. Uh, there is a uh, emerging greening strategy uh, we have a new officer who is um, looking at biodiversity so we would bring in our colleagues as well to develop a process where residents can be involved and take ownership as much as they would like to but still for us to remain with oversight and that will be reflected in future maintenance costs of any permanent scheme so that if, for instance, we had uh, COLAS as contractors or green and clean as contractors from housing to maintain them, we would have allocated an amount in any future budgets to ensure that happens, so we're not left with areas that potentially don't look as good as they could do. My final question is, I, I obviously <coughs> spoke to my colleague, Councillor Gerard, a couple of weeks ago now um, about this. and made her aware this was coming up and asked her if she had any views about it generally. I also spoke to Councillor Fielding just recently, um, last week. I mean, he did actually raise an issue that they were under the impression they were going to be given a briefing about the report after it had been published. Now, I said, do you mean, when you said after published, do you mean after it had been published, like, formally? And he said that's what he understood to be the case, but apparently it didn't happen. I don't know whether that's a misunderstanding or whether they were expected to come back and ask for it again, but they... they he said that they had missed out on getting a briefing, so I don't know if anybody knows anything about that. I say it may be a misunderstanding, but I just said I would ask the question while I was here. Thank you, Councillor Heaney. And we did make contact with Councillor Garada and Councillor Fielding, gave them a written update uh, once we'd met with Councillors Horton and Vernon Jackson to let them know that the report was going through. So we sent them an email update with the current situation and the information that would be included in a report and invited them uh, if they wanted to, we would organise a briefing. Uh, so if they would still like that briefing, that's absolutely fine. We can schedule that in. Uh, we didn't set a time because we didn't know their availability at the time, so we just sent that overall invitation. So if they would like one, we can make contact and organise that in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so, Michelle, did you get a response from either of them to that email? Uh, yeah, they just said they were happy with how the report was. Lovely. Okay. Well, obviously, Councillor Jarl has got other things to think about, so I wouldn't expect it to want to be, but I will, I will communicate back with Councillor. But, but George has not given birth recently. Sorry? George know, hasn't given birth recently. No, no. Well, he'd have difficulty doing it, wouldn't he? <laughs> um, 
Uh, so I will go back to Council and say that, that the offer is still open if of they course. want to have a yeah. briefing. So yeah, because I yeah, that's fine. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> not really questions, but observations or comments, really. Um, as is probably known here, I'm a country boy at heart. I like hills. I like valleys. I like grass. I like trees. I like etc. 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 So what I'm going to say is, please don't think that I'm against green areas because that's not the case I, I'm, I love that sort of thing um, but also as the chair would know and others would know I don't like car parking spaces being taken away and replaced by flowers so that's that's a definite no-no for me but it is not my ward and I think Susie and the residents in consultation with you should have um, the say on it and not me. Uh, the last thing is <clears throat> what our learned gentleman over there said about um, making it a one-way street, stops a rat race, etc, etc. One-way streets mean increase in speeding. No ifs and buts about that. Um, but saying that, I'm, I'm all for one-way streets, but I think that we as a council and the police need to make sure that that is not, um, you know, that's not happening. We must cut the speed down there because when it's a one-way street, the local residents and that team seem to think that it's a little bit easier to maybe walk across the road without caring too much because it's a one-way street. So we don't want any more accidents. We don't want any more injuries. So I think, as I say, as councillors and also the police should be involved to make sure it don't become a speedway track. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, uh, I'm happy to endorse the the recommendations here. Um, um, uh, Susie has kept me informed all the way through this project um, and, and my thanks to her for driving this forward um, uh, in, in the area um, and I think it is a, a really good example of working with residents to try to design something that meets their requirements and their wishes, not something that we've dreamed up at the council and then decided that's going to be good for them. So um, uh, I, th I think that's, that's worked well. So um, uh, I'm sure there'll be more that will get flow from this because we haven't got the money to do all the things that were suggested at one point. Um, <coughs> but I'm very happy to uh, support the recommendations that are in here. OK. Thanks. Um, Susie, yes, you're very welcome to stay for the rest of this thrilling agenda. But... <laughs> but <laughs> If you do feel the need, wish and desire to be elsewhere, um, we will understand it. Um, okay, Gareth, um, London Road Taxi Rank. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, so the purpose of this report is to consider responses uh, to the experimental traffic regulation order that's been in operation since the 5th of August um, last year, 2022, for the trial of a 22-hour, um, that's 9am to 7am, uh, two-car taxi rank located at the southern end of the southbound bus lane on London Road, close to the junction with Laburnum Grove. A plan showing the tra trial taxi rank is included uh, with the report um, and there's three recommendations. Um, the first is that um, the cabinet member for transport considers the responses received to the uh, traffic order, experimental traffic order during the six month consultation period from March to September 2022. The um, second recommendation is to approve making permanent the provisions of the traffic order for the continuation of a 22-hour two-car taxi rank on London Road uh, southbound. And um, the third recommendation is to note that the existing night time, that's 7pm to 7am taxi rank and its associated shelter will remain uh, in place. I'm happy to uh, go into further detail or respond to any questions, but those are the recommendations. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thanks very much. This seems to have worked well. Um, Brian? No, no questions at all. It seems a very thorough, comprehensive report, and um, I'm happy with all that. Okay. Yep. Graham? Yep, I think the same. The, uh, there's no issues around safety. All the bus companies are happy as well. Um, yep. The issues that have been raised have all been addressed, I think, so no, yep. no problem with me. Okay. Okay, fine. Thank you very much indeed. That's, we're happy with that. Thank you. Um, Okay, next item, item five, um, uh, local transport plan, safer routes to schools. Michelle, um, I know my 
things has Stan here, but Stan is coming to watch how the professionals do. He's in the wrong place. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Felicity. <laughs> she can't take me anywhere. <laughs> so, yes, thank you, well, Councillor Vernon Jackson. Well, I think Pop World was saying the same, weren't they? <laughs> Let's leave Pop World where Pop World is, <laughs> Councillor Vernon Jackson. Thank you. No, so, <laughs> so. Uh, I'm here today to present the report for the Local Transport Plan Safer Routes to School 23-24. We're asking for approval from the Cabinet Member for the following recommendations, that the budget allocated in Local Transport Plan for 23-24 budget is spent at the following locations, Burfields Road, an update of school zigzags, Alloway Avenue, and additional sites of interest if the funding allows. The purpose of the Safer Routes to School programme has the following objectives to promote safer, more environmentally sustainable and healthier ways of getting to and from school, with particular emphasis on walking and cycling, to reduce the risk of casualties occurring on routes to school and to support and contribute to the objectives outlined in the LTN. The site selection has taken place based on casualty data, input from residents, input from other stakeholders such as schools and local councillors. The sites that we've selected are Burfields Road, leading to Admiral Lord Nelson School. Uh, the route is a shared use path on the southern side, advisory cycle path on the northern side. There is a pattern of drivers pulling out from the minor roads onto the major road, as in, for instance, Claybank Road, Kiln Road, onto Burfields Road, uh, potentially not stopping in time and not in initiating their turning movement uh, before the cyclists have come across their path. We intend to carry our school keep clear and lining updates in multiple locations around the city. Um, as part of our statutory duties, we regularly review uh, zigzag lines, and it has been shown that some of these could do with some development and improvement through a TRO, so that will be part of the budget as well. And finally, uh, there is, if you scroll through the report, you'll see a detailed list of locations. Uh, the last site that will be worked on is the Alloway, Alloway Avenue, the Victory Primary School. Um, it has currently a flat zebra crossing that is uh, a just road surface zebra crossing. It is our intention to raise that zebra crossing up to create an additional traffic calming measure and to provide additional safety for pedestrians when using that zebra crossing. Uh, Additional sites of interest include Moorings Way Infant School, which could benefit from multiple improvements to the road marking and pedestrian crossing, and will be considered for any remaining funds once the other sites outlined in this report have been addressed. That's the summary of the report. I'm happy to take questions. Um, Michelle, can I thank you for including for the zigzags and um, flying ball um, on Malins Road? A resident talked to me, actually, they, came to, they saw me earlier today as well. Um, um, and, and I went to see what it was like at, at, at the morning drop-off time and it, it was very busy with a lot of kids crossing um, and weaving through parked cars and it just wasn't safe. Um, so the zigzags will mean that people can park at night so that that's fine, it's not losing things. Um, but, it, but I'm very grateful that we've added that in to reflect um, the request from, from local residents there. Okay. Um, Graham, any thoughts? A um, couple of questions, yes. <clears throat> Just talk about Burfield Road, and um, I, I see the points you're making about vehicles turning in and out of those roads. The suggested measures, say, coloured surfacing across junctions, heightening awareness, additional signage, giveaway markings and junctions could be set back. I mean, in a sense, we've started to do that in other places, but we, haven't, we aren't proposing to raise the the table as has happened for example in some places is that just a question of cost or safety or something else then I've got another question after that it's partially budget as we would like to cover as many sites as possible so therefore we're trying to be as cost effective as possible um, and it is a staged approach so based on the number of casualties and the usage uh, both inside and outside of school times. This is considered an appropriate measure at the moment. Um, the way that it's installed is that we would obviously monitor it, as we do with all casualty figures in the city. If there is no, uh, no, no difference or potentially there is an increase for any reason, then we would look at this again and it would go through the feasibility process and potentially have additional funding attached to it for future bids, from future bids. 
in relation to the Yellow Avenue one, the Victory Primary School, the report actually says in paragraph 410 that um, outside Victory Primary School, the Vebral Crossing is the only non-raised table crossing. Um, I don't know whether it means the only one in Alleyway Avenue or whatever, but I'm wondering, has it been a long I can't remember if it's a long standing one, and if, if so, why, why, what, if it's the odd, an odd one out, why is it the odd one out? Why wasn't it designed as a raised table one? Probably because it's elderly, like many of us. The Victory Primary School was built in about 2011, 2012. So it's been in place for about 12 years. Um, I would actually, that was one of my schemes, so I can't answer this question. <laughs> Um, at the time, uh, the design was considered sufficient through the road safety audit because of the volume of traffic um, and pedestrian movement, but over the years, both have increased, um, and so it's now not. It, we would now like to make improvements to it. Um, the rest of Alloway Avenue does have traffic calming measures along the length of it, um, including raised table zebra crossings to uh, Castle View Academy, which is the secondary school just further up the road. So in order to mitigate against the increased pupil numbers, which could potentially increase as well um, because other schools in the city are, are at capacity, so there could potentially be greater pupil movement in the future, we feel that it's prudent to make these measures now to complete the, the traffic calming along the route. Final question, it relates to the table on page three or page one, 127, 137, um, figure one, the 2021 review, it talks about um, some others. I, I have a particular interest in Medina Primary School because I used to be a governor there many years ago. It talks about the, um, the markings being unenforceable. Um, so could you explain why they're unenforceable and are these ones on this list that have this going to be brought back at another time relatively soon so they can be enforced? So the ones on that list within the report are the ones that we intend to do. And as we said, we, um, a review of all of the sites was carried out. And within, so the prescribed length is within the traffic signs regulations and general directions. Um, so uh, these have evolved over time. These weren't mine. <laughs> I can't give the inside information that I had for the previous one. Um, but they have evolved to a point where at the moment parts of them are unenforceable, yes. So in order to be able to provide that continuity and to allow the CEOs to do what they need to do, we do need to make those changes to them. Is that in process or is that to come a lot later? Is it any, any anticipated time scales? I'm not going to hold you to it, but just an idea like, is it next year? year after next week <laughs> so if the report is approved today then obviously we would move forward for um, implementation of the TRO because again it's subject to a public consultation um, and to detailed design of the lining but because of the nature of this type of work we would definitely put this as a priority so that we can make those changes as quickly as possible Okay, Brian, I'm sorry, I should have come to you first because this is because uh, part of this is in your ward. Alloway, yeah. Alloway Avenue, yeah. Um, <clears throat> first of all, in general, on an overall, I'm happy with it. I did ask quite a few questions last time uh, regarding zigzags and regarding uh, parking maybe a street or two away but having arrows on the pavement so that the children don't have to cross the roads, etc., etc. But you gave me good answers uh, to that last time. Um, and obviously, wherever children and schools are, we're all concerned about the, the safety. Uh, my ward, Paul's Grove, Alloway Avenue, I think, as much as you can say, is very good. Alloway Avenue is very good. The Carmen, uh, road Carmen there is excellent. Um, you're always going to get people who speed. It's, it's just the way it is. But in general, the road Carmen in Alloway Avenue is very good. There is a very high amount of traffic there now, which um, Michelle has really gone through, uh, as, as said about. Um, so the improvements are needed there for the schools. Uh, but in general, I'm, I'm happy with our ward in that respect. Uh, not maybe in others, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the road sides of, our, school, uh, of our, our ward and what's been done and what hopefully will be done to improve that. Um, I'll go along with all that. No problem. No problems for me. Great. Okay. All right. In which case, all fine. Happy. It seems very sensible um, to get all of these done. Okay. Um, moving on 
TROs, um, uh, item six for disabled parking bays. Um, we've had a written email um, about the one in Shearer Road from the person who applied, um, but I think the points raised are, are, are in, you've taken account of uh, Denise when coming to the recommendation, as I understand it, is that, I think? Um, well, the, the email that's come in is basically from the applicant and is supporting yeah. and explaining the reasons why they feel yep. they need the disabled bay, so rather yep. than the objection. So I think it's in support. So, so I think we probably don't need to read it out, but I think we need to note that we've received this from the applicant for the Shearer Road one. Okay, Denise, um, do you want to walk us through what we need to know here? So this report is to consider the objections that have been received to traffic regulation orders 232 and 242, both of 2023, which were advertised to introduce 70 disabled parking bays in various roads in Portsmouth. We received objections to three bays, one in St Barbara Way, one in Shearer Road and one in St Augustine Road. Full details of the objections are included within the report. The recommendation is to ask the Cabinet Member for Transport to approve the implementation of the disabled bays in St Barbara Way outside Block 26 to 36, Shearer Road outside number 118 and St Augustine Road outside number 207. And also to note that the remainder of Traffic Regulation Order 232 came into operation under 232A on the 22nd of September and the remainder of TRO 242 will come into operation under TRO 242A on the 20th of November, i.e. next week, as no objections were received to the remaining proposals. Any proposals approved following this report will be brought into operation under TROs 232B and 242B 2023. Uh, just one point, I thought it was worth um, clarifying that with regard to the existing disabled bays in Shearer Road outside 129 and 133 that were mentioned by one, the person objecting to the Shearer Road um, bay that we have actually placed a works order to remark those existing disabled bays because they didn't leave a usable parking space in between them so we've, um, we're changing that we don't need to change the traffic regulation orders for that um, but that should be taking um, place in the works order due for the start from the 20th of November. So I just thought it was useful to yeah. clarify that has been ordered and is taking place. Um, and happy to take any other questions. Okay, thank you. Brian, any thoughts? Um, I've got to be careful what I say because I got in trouble last week. No, I've got in the papers. Um, I don't know, I wasn't here. Yeah, last Tuesday, yeah, in the um, Wednesday, I was in the... In Portsmouth Evening News. And now, since then, I'm everything under the sun. Can you believe it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I've been called everything. Um, let me say this, and I'm 100% in support of disabled bays, Evening News, if you're listening. Right, I'm 100% in support of them. Um, and we should help anybody who's in that position. The one thing I would say is that a little incident, which I spoke about, I think, some time back... Um, we had a, uh, uh, which is, is, is sort of attached to this, we had a, a message come around from the council in Eastfield Road, we'll be like flower things put out the front, the lady next door, the old lady next door said, oh yes, yes please, we had no parking in there at all, we had mm. short, so short parking, but various people had these flower things put out the front, um, the lady next door died, by the time it was done she died, so that's, that space has gone forever. It and hasn't gone forever. You Sorry? can have them have things removed, as Graham will tell you. Oh, in in, in St Jude, well, they've had um, they've had um, um, build outs Take removed, um, which had planting in them because residents wanted the parking back. Yeah, good. I'm pleased to hear that, uh, Chair. So with this, I think that if unfortunately um, a disabled person dies, I don't think that bay should carry on with. No. That's, that's already sorted. Yeah, yeah, that's you, so, you get so, information on yeah. that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Right. I'm happy. <laughs> Good. No, so we regularly <coughs> paint over disabled bays where where the applicant either hasn't got a car anymore um, or, or somebody sadly yeah. died. So um, Denise goes out and paints it black, paints the white bit black again. <laughs> what a good girl you are. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Okay, Graham. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm also very happy with the recommendations, but I think it covers the objections. And also, if people move, we also take yeah, a Yeah, good point. Yes, absolutely. And just to comment on, on Brian's uh, recent encounter with the news, I was at that meeting, and he did say, so his son and group leader did say, he tells me not to say this, but he went and did it anyway. <laughs> and then he went into the news. <laughs> So, so, Brian, you're, you're fortunate. The, f the first council I was ever a councillor on, New Forest, um, my mum was chairman of the council, and so she ran the council meetings, and so she had to tell me to shut up at times. Um, yeah, yeah, shut up and sit down, Gerald, she said. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay, so, um, Denise, fine with all of these. Um, um, thank you very much indeed. Um, Last thing I think is Simon, um, and, and, and it is wonderful to see um, the power, Simon, of Portsmouth City Council. Indeed, it is. <laughs> but I think I think a few others may have made a representation <laughs> as well. But in terms, uh, this yeah, this report this report is just for information, and it's concerned the proposal that Transport for London had to withdraw travel cards or the purchase of travel cards for people travelling from outside the Oyster Card area. So that included Portsmouth, uh, Portsmouth, and many other places. And so between April and June, TfL had commenced an engagement process to withdraw with a proposal that they would withdraw the one-day travel card which allows travel on buses, underground and train services within the capital. And it's been in use since 1995. And lots of these tickets are sold by people. They go from London, uh, from Portsmouth, they go to London, and then it allows them unlimited travel within Greater London uh, by all those modes of transport. Uh, and then on the 23rd of October, Transport for London announced that they were, in fact, uh, going to continue to retain the uh, one-day travel card. Uh, they'd reversed that decision. Uh, that there's some agreement has been reached between TfL and the train operating companies in terms of what percentage of the money of the el travel card element is kept by TfL and what percentage is kept by the rail operator. And that's just so this is just the an update on that to give you what the current position is. And there's some information there on the number of tickets sold, uh, how it would have been that much more expensive if people would have had to have bought a return to London and then a travel card as two separate tickets. Uh, it would have been substantially more, up to £7 or so a day for people travelling in London for the day. OK. Well, I'm, I'm really pleased that they've changed their decision. I had, I had zero hope that they would, but I thought it was worth giving it a try. Um, and I, I think that's, it's, it, it is really good um, that we've managed to retain this. And, and my thanks to everybody at the City Council for adding our weight to others to make sure that residents here in Portsmouth were able to keep going to London at a uh, at a price that people at, at least, well more people will be able to afford um, Brian quite okay. happy really, ha really happy to be truthful I use trains all the time so yeah, I think it's a very good decision and of course TfL is controlled by Sadiq Khan who is Labour London or Mayor, Labour Mayor for London so that's what you get from the Labour Council you see <laughs> listen to consultations yes no comment <laughs> <laughs> okay all right. Well, many thanks indeed for that. Um, I think that brings us to the end of our ag agenda, but um, thank you very much indeed, everybody. And I think that is the conclusion of our meeting tonight. <laughs>